The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine needs. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Well, let's see what's going on in Summerfield this wintry Saturday morning. Things are unusually quiet in the Gildersleeve household. Leroy and Marjorie at the breakfast table are speaking in whispers. Bertie's walking around on tiptoes. You want some more pancakes, Leroy? Yeah, I sure do, Bertie. Shh, Leroy, keep your voice down. Oh, for... Yeah, you hadn't better wake up your uncle. Okay. How come Uncle didn't go to work this morning? I don't know. All I know is he left orders do not disturb. He had to work late at the water department last night, so I guess he's taking the day off. All I know is we better be quiet. Okay. Can I have some more pancakes? Okay. You want some more, Miss Marjorie? Please, Bertie. Okay. What was that? I don't know. It came from outside. Hey, look out there! Uh oh, Mr. Bullet backed up over our can box again. Oh dear, cans all over the street. Yeah. Mr. Gilsey ain't gonna like this. I'm sure got mad last time he did it. He sure did. Maybe he'll punch Mr. Bullet in the nose. Oh, Leroy. This could lead to a lot of trouble. I hope Mr. Gilsey didn't hear it. What was that? Uh-oh, he heard it. Here comes trouble. Bertie, children, what was that noise? Well, Mr. Gilsey, you see... Everything's was... all right, Unky. Why don't you just go back to bed? I would still like to know what that noise was. It was Mr. Bullard, Unky. He ran over our can box again. Oh, is that all? Hmm, I guess I will go back to bed. Huh? Oh, aren't you mad at Mr. Bullard? Why, no. But you said if he did it again, you were going to punch him in the nose. Well, that was in 1948, Leroy. I've decided that this year I'm going to be more friendly with Mr. Bullard, more neighborly. Well, for corn's sake. It's true, we've had our little arguments in the past, but after all, he lives right across the street, and there's no reason why we can't be good friends. I think that's wonderful of you, Unky. It sure is, Mr. Gilsey. Oh, I don't know. I'm just being sensible, that's all. No reason why Mr. Bullard and I should be quarreling all the time. He's sort of a stuffed shirt, but he's really not a bad fellow. I'll just be friendly to him, and I'm sure he'll be friendly to me. Hey, Uncle, Mr. Bullard's coming up the walk. Oh? He doesn't look very friendly to me. He sure don't. Well, it's nonsense. He's probably just coming in to apologize. Love thy neighbor. Step up and say, how be ya. Ah, good morning, Mr. Bullard. Gildersleeve. I know I've... you want to apologize for running over my can box. Well, accidents happen in the best of families. Ha, 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 ha. Gildersleeve, I do not want to apologize. Oh? When I take my car out, you know it's necessary for me to back into your driveway. I have such a long car. Well, yes, of course. And I've asked you repeatedly not to leave your can box on the edge of the driveway where I'm liable to back over it. Yes, I know. Has it ever occurred to you that I might puncture a tire that way? Well, uh, I never thought of that. No, you wouldn't. Furthermore, your disreputable old can box is an eyesore. Well... You know, this is supposed to be a first-class neighborhood. <laughs> Careful, Bullard. What's that? Yeah, nothing. I'll uh, pick up the cans. Yes, the exercise certainly won't hurt you. <laughs> you might work off some of that stomach. <laughs> Bullard? Bullard, I... Yeah. You... Uh, I'm sorry about the can box. Well, just see that it doesn't happen again. Good day. I made it. <sighs> this is a nice 
way to spend a winter day, all right? <laughs> Sitting with your little family around the fireside. Uh, pretty nice, all right. Don't you think so, Marjorie? Yes, Uncle. Don't you think so, Leroy? Yeah, it's okay, I guess. Hmm? Uncle, I'm tired of staying in. Can I have a quarter to go to the movies? Uh, Leroy, you went to the movies last night. <laughs> if you're restless, why don't you go out and play in the snow? No, there's nothing to do out there. Well, you could pick up those cans and put them back in the box. That'd be wonderful exercise. I thought you were going to do it, Uncle. Mr. Bullet said you were the one that needed it. Never mind, Leroy. Well, go out and play, anyway. There's little Craig Bullard across the street. Go over and play with him. He's a twerp. <laughs> now, he's not so bad for a Bullard. Well, I don't like him. He's a twerp. Oh, Leroy, that's not the right attitude. Remember, we're going to be friendly with the Bullards now, huh? Gee, I liked it better when we were fighting with him. Yes. <laughs> That'll do now. Go out and play with Craig, Leroy. Mm, okay. And put your little coat on. Okay. Love, I never... Ta -da -da -da. Uncle Mort. Yes? You look awful funny with that halo around your head. What? I can't get used to you being so sweet and gentle with the Bullards. Well, I'm just starting my own good neighbor policy, that's all. You certainly are. I thought sure you were going to blow up this morning when Mr. Bullard talked to you that way. Well, frankly, so did I for a minute. <laughs> it just takes a little self-control, Marjorie. Bullard has his little faults, but so do we all. There's no reason whatsoever why our two little families can't live peacefully side by side. Love thy neighbor, step up and say... <laughs> what's that? It's Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, what's the matter? Who? Craig. Oh, dear. Here, 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 here. There goes your good neighbor policy. Well, I'm sure little Craig didn't mean it. He did, too. He hit me when I wasn't looking, little sneak. Now, Leroy. And then he ran in the house before I could hit him, little sneak. Yeah, now, Leroy, it isn't that serious. A little snow never hurt anybody. Well, isn't that your nose? It's my nose. Yeah, well. <laughs> A little sneak. Say, there he is out in the yard again. Wait till I get my hands on him. Leroy, you come back here. I'll take care of Craig. You will? Yes, I'll go over and have a little talk with him. Oh. Can't I hit him with a snowball first? No, you can't. I will handle this. You just wait here. <laughs> Cold out here. I'll just explain to Craig that he shouldn't do things like that. No reason why these little things can't be settled amicably. Oh, Craig. Hey, Craigie. What do you want? <laughs> come here a minute. I will not. Well, okay, then I'll come over there. You keep away from me. I'm not going to hurt you, my boy. I just want to have a little talk with you. You keep away from me. <laughs> Craigie, I just wanted to... Craig, what are you going to do with that snowball? No, Craigie, you wouldn't. <laughs> Craig, put that thing down. Don't you throw that. Craig, oh. <laughs> Leroy is right. You are a little sneak. Just wait till I make a snowball. I'll show you. You let me alone. I'll teach you this little snowball. Hey, what's the matter? What are you doing here, Gildersleeve? Oh, hello, Mr. Boy. What's going on out here? Are you annoying Craig? What? Oh, no. No, you see, Craig hit Leroy in the nose with a snowball, and then he hit me in the nose with a snowball. Well, he has a good aim, hasn't he? <laughs> I ought to throw this at him. That stuck-up nose of his would make a wonderful target. Now control yourself, Gildersleeve. Well, come on, Craig. After this, Gildersleeve, I suggest you play with someone your own size. Good day. <laughs> How can you love a neighbor like that? the people in Summerfield and I had to live across the street from Bullard. I guess he was right about that old can box of mine, though. Well, TV ought to have a box I could use. Uh, good afternoon, PV. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can your friendly neighborhood druggist do for you today? Well, I... You might want to take advantage of our weekend sale on toothbrushes. Uh, no. Or uh, you might be interested in our bargain offer on nail files. Well, no, PV. I'm looking for a box. How's that? I'd like to get a box. A box of what? An empty box. 
Could you repeat that, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> Look, Peavy, I need an empty box, a large one. A carton to put my cans in. Oh, oh. <laughs> Do you have one to spare? Well, I believe I have one in the back room. Oh, uh, good. Mr. Bullard ran over mine this morning. Oh, Bullard ran over your can box again? I bet you raised Ned with him, huh? No, I didn't. You didn't? No. No use starting arguments over these little things. Bullard really isn't such a bad fellow, Peavy. Mr. Gildersleeve, are you sure you feel all right? <laughs> of course I do. There's no reason why neighbors shouldn't get along with each other. Mm, yes, not. It's just a matter of controlling your temper, that's all. Well, you have a point there, all right. Sure. I remember when I was a young man, I had a terrible temper. You did, Peavy? Oh, yes. I was a regular wildcat. Is that so? Positively. Yeah. I'll never forget the time I went on a picnic with the future Mrs. Peavy. Hmm? The town bully was there, and he started teasing her. He kept flipping olive pits in her potato salad. <laughs> He did? Yes, and I warned him he'd better stop or he'd have to take the consequences. But he kept on, and finally I couldn't control myself any longer. What'd you do, Peavy? Punch him in the nose? No, when he wasn't looking, I put a spider in his lunchbox. Uh... <laughs> With that terrible temper of yours, I'll bet Mrs. Peavy doesn't dare open her mouth when you're around. No, no I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I wouldn't either. Can I have the box, please? <laughs> Didn't know there were so many of these darn cans. Don't mind a little exercise, but this is overdoing it. Uh, here's some more over here. Tomato soup. Sliced peaches. Artichoke hearts. Oh, that's the night we had the judge over to dinner. It's a wonder he didn't eat the can, too, the old goat. Uh, uh. Hi, Unc. Oh, uh, hello, Leroy. Need any help? Yeah, thanks a lot. You managed to time it just right, Leroy. I'm all through. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, uh. You can help me move this box over a little. Sure. Uh, let's see how Bullard can back into this thing now. Well, come on, Leroy. It's cold. Let's go in the house. Hey, Unc, there's Craig across the street. I'm going to get it. Leroy, you stay right here. I've got a snowball on me. You heard me, young man. We're not going to fight with the neighbors. Hey, Unc, there's Bullard backing in here again. Oh, well, he certainly won't back over the can box this time. He's heading right for it. What? <laughs> uh, he missed it. Well, hello, Mr. Bullard. Well, I see you got a new can box. Yeah. <laughs> Peavy gave me a cod liver oil carton, and I moved it over so it wouldn't be in your way. If you'd done that in the first place, I wouldn't have hit it. Uh, yeah. Look out, I'm duck! Huh? Oh, <laughs> Who threw that snowball? Craig did, the little sneak. Why, that little... <laughs> Temper, Gildersleeve. Boys will be boys. <laughs> mm, that does it. Leroy, hand me that snowball. Gildersleeve? Don't you dare throw that snowball at my son. I wouldn't think of it. This one's for you. Prepare! <laughs> Get him, please! Get him right in the nose, huh? I did. <laughs> Leroy, keep passing the ammunition. <laughs> Best on biscuits. I like it best on bread, especially on that rich pumpernickel, Bertie. Hot bread is the way I like it best. Well, I'll have to admit it's awfully good on pancakes, too. Sure is, Mr. Wall, because when parquet starts melting, you get all that luxury taste. Every last smitching of it. Luxury is the word, Bertie, because parquet is prepared like a rare luxury food from the selected products of American farms. And whether you like it best on waffles or bread, every pound of parquet is brimming over with nourishment and reinforced with 15,000 units of essential vitamin A. Then bring on them reinforcements, I say. Bring on them vitamins, just as long as they taste so good. And cost so little. I guess you know this, Bertie. Parquet costs only about half as much as the most expensive spread. Bring it on, I say, because it tastes like it should cost twice as much. Friends, next time your family sits down to dinner, serve them delicious parquet. 
the whole family will enjoy the light, delicate taste of this spread, this luxury spread that tastes like it should cost twice as much. Tomorrow, ask for Parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. Yes, yes ma'am. You'll get your whole family to say, bring it on. Bring on that Parquet. <laughs> Well, the temperature has dropped sharply in Summerfield, and things are especially chilly in the Gildersleeve Bullard area. Yes, and there's a big wind blowing, too. And we're not going to have any more to do with the Bullard, do you understand? All right, Anki. Do you understand, Bertie? Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve. All right. And Marjorie, I don't even want you to speak to him on the street. Oh, Anki. Well, I don't. But uh, yesterday, you wanted us to be friendly with him. That was yesterday. You can't be friendly with a stuffed shirt like Bullard. It's like trying to pet a porcupine. <laughs> it's not funny, Bertie. I don't want you talking to their cook anymore. No, sir. The next time she comes over to borrow a cup of sugar, put some salt in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that good neighbor policy sure didn't last long. <laughs> Unky, Unky, aren't you being a little bit silly about this? No, I'm not being silly. I try to get along with Bullard. I extended the hand of friendship and he bit it. Well, I don't have to take anything from him just because he's got a new DeSoto. <laughs> Say, I could let the air out of his tires. <gasps> Uncle Moore! Yeah? I'll get it! I'll get it! I hope that's Bullard. I'll. Hello, Gildy. Oh, hello, Judge. Come on in. Just thought I'd drop by. Oh, hello, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Well, Gildy, how's the good neighbor today? What? Peavy told me about your new attitude toward Mr. Bullard. I think it's very commendable. Don't you mention Bullard's name to me, that silk hat Harry. What? Well, Gildy, what's happened? I thought you were full of the milk of human kindness. I was, but it curdled. <laughs> yes, things are back to normal, Judge. Oh, from what I heard, my chubby friend, I thought you'd sprouted wings. Of course, it'd take uh, pretty big wings to get you off the ground. <laughs> I don't care what you thought, you old goat. Anyway, from now on, I'll go my way and Bullard can go his. And I hope he trips. Gilday. I mean it. If I never see Bullard again, it'll be too soon. Oh, hello, Leroy. Hello. Oh, hello, Leroy. Well, have you been having a jolly time playing in the snow? No, I was talking to Craig. Craig? Leroy, didn't I forbid you? Now, 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 wait a minute, Gildy. Can't you see something's troubling the boy? Huh? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. Yes, there is, Leroy. Now, what is it? Nothing. I didn't want to go anyhow. Go where? On the sleigh ride this afternoon. Sleigh ride? What are you talking about, Leroy? Well, Mr. Bullard hired a big sleigh. He's taking all the kids out for a ride. Oh. They're going out to the lake, skate and roast wieners and stuff. But who cares? Did they invite you, Leroy? No, Craig said I couldn't go. But who cares? Sure. You wouldn't have any fun with old Prissy Pants Bullard along anyway. He'd probably charge you for the wieners. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they won't have a good time at all. No, guess not. Well, I think I'll go upstairs. Excuse me. I'll go up with you, Leroy. Glad Leroy's being sensible about this. Uh huh. After all, he's not missing much. Just a sleigh ride? Sure, he doesn't care. Gildy, why don't you be honest with yourself? What? You know very well Leroy's dying to go. Well? And if you weren't on the outs with Bullard, he would have been invited. Well, maybe he would. Gildy, but... why don't you be a good sport about this? What? Why don't you go over and make up with Bullard right now for Leroy's sake? I will not. Gildy. I've taken enough from Bullard. By George, I can be pushed just so far. Then I become a raging lion. If you ask me, you're acting more like a mule, a long-eared one at that. Booker, why don't you mind... Now, now, if you'll take my advice... Save your advice for your jury, you old windbag. Who are you calling a windbag, you pumpkin head? Ambulance chaser. Gildy. Oh, go stick your head in a briefcase and zip it up. <laughs> Good day. Good riddance. <laughs> uh, uh. Uncle Morris. Yes? Can I talk?
talk to you for a minute. Well, I'll try to read the paper, but all right. Unky, Leroy's still up in his room. Oh, he is? Yeah. Bertie just brought him up a sandwich, but he wouldn't eat it. Oh? Oh, it's too bad he can't go on that sleigh ride. Yes. Unky, couldn't you go over and make up with Mr. Bullard just this once? No, I'm not going over to Bullard, Marjorie. I thought I made that clear. But, Uncle... I'm sorry about Leroy, but it just can't be helped. But, Uncle Moore... That will do, Marjorie. The subject is closed. All right. I'm going over to Francie's for a while. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. <sighs> Children are certainly a problem. Now, where was I? Uh, I've read Truman's speech three times, and I still don't know what it says. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, hello, Bertie. Hello, Mr. Gilsey. You been up in Leroy's room? Yes, sir. Guess he's feeling all right, huh? Too bad. He can't go on that sleigh ride, but it can't be helped. No, sir. <laughs> What's Leroy doing up there, Bertie? Reading? Playing his little radio? No, sir. He's just sitting and staring. Oh. That's all he's doing, just sitting and staring. Oh, I see. Well... He ain't reading. He ain't playing the radio. He's just sitting and staring. I understand, Bertie. That's what he's doing, just sitting and staring. Yes, Bertie. He ain't jumping up and down. I know that. He ain't singing a song. All right, Bertie. He ain't doing a dance. Bertie. No, sir, he's just sitting and staring. Uh, poor little fellow. Yes, he feels pretty bad. All right. These things mean a lot to a kid. Maybe I ought to go over and see Bullard. No. Some fellows would weaken at a time like this. Swallow their pride. Eat humble pie. That's what some fellows would do, all right. But not me. No, sir. I won't. Yes, I will. <laughs> Control your temper now, Gildersleeve. Remember, this is for Leroy. I'll be nice to Bullard if it kills me. Hello, Miss... Oh, Craig. Who do you want? I'd like to see your father. Would you call him, please? No, I won't. <laughs> Go on now, Craigie. I want to see your father. Well, he doesn't want to see you. What? My father says you're an ignoramus. You mean ignoramus. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he calls you. A big fat one. <laughs> You tell your father to go jump in the lake. I will not. You're a big, fat, ignorant animal. Look here, you little snob. <laughs> well, he's not so smart. Can't even pronounce ignoramus. <laughs> uh, oh, hello, Leroy. Hello. Oh, so you decided to come downstairs for a while, huh, my boy? Yep. Uh, Leroy, I just went over to make up with the Bullards. You did? Yeah, but I'm afraid it didn't do any good. Oh. It's too bad about the sleigh ride. But don't you worry, my boy. We can have a wonderful time right here at home. Sure. I'll tell you what. I'll get some wieners and we'll roast them right here in the living room. Won't that be fun? Thanks, son. But I'm not very hungry. Oh, well, I know. How about going to the movies? I don't feel like going right now. Oh? Well, it should be something you'd like to do. Yeah. Let's see. Now, what's that out there? There's some of the kids. Huh? Red and Chuck. And there's Piggy. I didn't know he was going. Leroy, why don't you come away from the window now? There's nothing more to see. Okay. I know how you feel, my boy, but there'll be other sleigh rides. It's okay, Uncle. There'll be plenty of good times ahead, Leroy. There'll be other things. We... I'll get it, Bertie. Gildersleeve? Hmm? Bullard. Where's Leroy? What? We're waiting for him. We're all ready to start our sleigh ride. But Leroy isn't going. I mean, Craig said he wasn't invited. What? Why, Craig knew better than that. Of course he's invited. Well, I thought that since... Uh... Since you and I have been having a little disagreement, you wouldn't... Oh, nonsense. I'm not that small, Gildersleeve. Leroy is most welcome to come. He is? Well, thanks. Leroy! Here I am. I've got my skates and everything. Can I 
Mr. Bullard. Well, that's all right, son. Have a good time, my boy. I will. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Bullard. We've had our little difficulties, but, well, I just want you to know I think you're a fine fellow. You do? Well, I still think you're an ignoramus. See? Good day, Gildersleeve. <laughs> oh, my neighbor. Step up and smell. <laughs> Hot toast on a winter morning. Hot toast covered with melted parquet. There's nothing better. And the nourishment you get from parquet is as welcome to your system as parquet's light, delicate flavor is welcome to your taste. Serve parquet for breakfast tomorrow. And as you enjoy helping after helping of this delicious food with a luxury taste, remember, it costs only about half as much as the most expensive spreads. You'll like its light, delicate flavor on waffles, pancakes, muffins, as well as on toast or bread. No matter how you use parquet, we think you'll agree, it tastes like it should cost twice as much. That's parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> Did you have a good time on your sleigh ride, Leroy? I sure did, Unc. It was swell. We skated, roasted wieners, and everything. Oh, uh, that's good. And then we sat around the fire, and Mr. Bullard gave us a little talk. A talk? Uh, he would. What did old frozen face have to say? He talked about thrift, Unc. He said it was important to get the saving habit when you're young. Oh? And he said the best way to save was to buy United States savings bonds. Well, I hate to agree with Bullard, but for once in his life, he's absolutely right. Savings bonds are the best way to save, Leroy. I've been buying them for a long time. Uh-huh. They're very profitable. For every $3 you put in, you get back 4 And they're easy to buy. I just have mine taken out of my salary down at the water department every month. People who aren't on a payroll can buy them wherever they bank. Everybody ought to take advantage of one of these automatic saving plans, Leroy. Unc. Yes, my boy? I'd be glad to take advantage of one of those plans if you just raise my allowance a little. <laughs> Well, I'm sure we can arrange something, Leroy. Remember, folks, save for your future now. Buy United States savings bonds regularly. Good night. <laughs> the Great Gilded Sleeve is played by Harold Perry. It was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meek. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Arthur Q. Bryan, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wald saying goodnight for the Kraft Food Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> 